There we are. I missed it. Did you guys miss it? I miss it. See if I can find it. And yes, we already changed the belt. Yes, we changed the belt. We were in the desert. Uh, if you saw that video, you know what's up. If you didn't, we took both of these cars and we did about 300 miles through the desert. Uh, DJ drove this car. Uh, DJ and Chels, me and Brandy were in this car. Uh, I don't know, I think 40 miles in is what I calculated. We got error codes. What, what error codes were they? Uh, P0312 and P0314. What are we doing here? Well, we ran into a bit of a problem with some check engine codes and no power. Uh, check in, or uh, misfires. Misfire codes, usually, usually an indication of a belt. Um, I don't know, we might have to end up swapping out a belt. Who knows? Uh, we're gonna clear the code one more time, see what we do, what it gets. I'm gonna try to go a little easier on it. I don't know. He's gonna go easy. But, yeah, so we're waiting three minutes for that code to clear. We swapped out the belt, not knowing if that's even remotely a problem, what the issue is, but we're getting a misfire code that's common with, with the belt that slips. I know if I go beyond third, if I, if I keep it like, I don't know, quarter throttle, they'll cruise on up to we 50 miles We don't quarter throttle. Nope. Well, that didn't work out. That didn't fix our problem. But we're gonna carry on. Okay. Yep, I think that was Misfire codes, and you were limited to half throttle. Yeah, it went into limp mode. If I ran the car more than half throttle for any amount of time at all, it was misfiring, apparently. And then while misfiring, it ended up going into limp mode. So we had to stop. So basically, uh, we ran another, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, what, 260 miles. And I just didn't, I didn't go, you know, I didn't run it more than half throttle. It ran perfect that way. So what we're going to do right now is take it down to the dealership. We're going to take it in. I'll show you the codes right now, see what they say. So stick with us. Uh, I'm going to show you the codes in a minute. Okay, so let's see what this, uh, the one code says here. See if I can find it. And yes, we already changed the belt. Yes, we changed the belt. Yes. We didn't, we did not change the spark plugs, any of that crap, the car's, it's got 298 miles on it, it's going to the dealer, they can change the spark plugs. Oh, uh, you almost hit 300. I don't remember how to get to that. Yeah, there was a diagnostic screen on this one, right? Oh, yeah. look, you got a check engine. Oh, what do we got? Let's see what we have here. We're going to try to find this for you. All settings. Uh, what do we got? Vehiculars. Uh, diagnostics. Okay. Oh, there we go. Right there. So it's 302 and 31. Which is weird because these were cleared. I don't know. Right. I ran the car out of idle last night, but that's what we got. Uh, uh, zero P0314, P0302. Misfire and cylinder misfire. Cylinder 2 misfire, and I guess cylinder misfire is just in general. Hey, you had a cylinder misfire. This one's which one? So, honestly, I'm going to guess. I, I kind of believe that if we just threw some spark plugs in it right now, it would probably be fine. But just in case, we're going to, you know, let the dealer figure it out under warranty, I hope. Uh, there was another main code over here. I don't know if it means anything different than these. I'm not familiar with them. Uh, let's see if we can get to that. We'll fire this thing up. Uh, oh, 
okay, and then we can cycle through. There's two. Oh wait, there's a six five five nine two. I bet you they're the same thing as what we already have. Yeah, so this guy's the same build. Anyway, that's what's going down. We're gonna load this, uh, and we'll take you with us to the dealership. See what they have to say. Okay, so we have two trailers. Uh, this smaller one, and then we have that uh, tandem axle. Uh, tandem axle is out on loan right now to Uriah. He's going to bring his car over so we can take a look at it. But this is our smaller trailer. This car barely fits on there. We're going to make it happen today uh, because we need to use it. Um, but we're going to angle that out so we can back up to it, hook it up. We're going to throw this guy on it. Um, and then what we'll do is uh, tie it down. And then we'll figure out what it's going to take to make this gate close. Ultimately, uh, I'm going to extend these out, but not, uh, but not today. So we got the trailer hooked up. Now we can pull this thing out. We're just gonna pull it out and wipe it down a little bit so it's just not so dirty when we get it there. I don't want anybody getting the impression that we don't care. Uh, yeah, don't get that impression. We want our car treated right and taken care of and uh, fixed. So yeah. Let's pull this thing out and take a look at it. Okay, so we gave this thing, I'm not gonna say a full on pledge challenge, but we gave it a uh, pretty good pledge challenge. Yeah, it's not bad, it was dirty. If you wanna see some, if you wanna see something heartbreaking, uh, take a look at this. Brand new car, 260 miles through the desert. Look at that, springs chopped up. Yeah, anyway, we got a resolution for that. Uh, I'll show you. Let me show you real quick what we're gonna do. See how it works out. Uh, this is our new trailer. We've had it for, I don't know, a few months. But when we got this trailer, uh, Danny had some used E-Track. It was green. I painted it with can, with a uh, out of the can bed liner. This stuff looks awesome. It's super durable. Remember, we've had a car sitting on this for hundreds of miles. And look at it. I mean, you know, it's a little worn, but that's, Actually, thousands of miles. Oregon and back, Glamis and back. Uh, the only place where it got chewed up was when the car got wrecked and metal, you know, metal pieces drug across it. Other than that, it's almost perfect in most spots. I think that'll hold up pretty good on these trailing arms. And, uh, you know, uh, and it can be resprayed re anytime you want. The springs, eh, well, whatever. <laughs> All right, again, we're going down because of those codes. If you didn't see that in the beginning of the video, go check it out. Uh, a few codes, a couple codes. I guess uh, Polaris has their own codes, but it also has like kind of standard OBD2 codes.
pinch on each side. You're against this side. That doesn't quite fit, but that's okay. What we're gonna do for today, we're gonna grab a ratchet strap right here and just bring it down to, uh... all right, so we're gonna throw a couple wheel bonnets on this thing and tie it down. We're gonna have to go over. We're gonna have to work on, uh... we're gonna have to work on our uh, strategy for tying this thing down on this trailer because we probably actually will lose, use this trailer. I need to see, do we have any tongue weight? If we have zero tongue weight, that could be an issue, but... No, there's definitely some tongue weight there. Okay, so we're putting the last strap on. We threw wheel bonnets on the front. We went around the front of the trailer. We're just going a short distance. Uh, like I said, this thing doesn't actually fit on this little trailer. Uh, it's a little long. So actually what we're going to do, we are going to use this trailer from time to time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... Uh, Extend this out, maybe grind this one off and make a new one that comes that uh, covers that spot and comes all the way out to cover this spot. And that'll take care of that issue. Then the gate will just, you know, be leaned back a little bit. I think it'll be perfectly fine. As long as I think it'll be perfectly fine, uh, that's what matters. All right, so we made it over here to where all the fun stuff is. Normally, they have a bunch of inventory right here. But I think due to the COVIDs, not so much. But we're gonna go here and we're gonna go in here and see what the deal is, and let's see if we can get this thing dropped off. All right, we're over here at Costa Motorsports Service Department. We're gonna drop this thing off. We'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna pull it off, park it over here somewhere with the key in it, and sign some paperwork and get out of here. All right. All right. Oh. Those rocks just ate that trailing arm up. Yeah, screw the dozer. I don't know if you can see it too well, but uh, look at all that rust. It's down to bare metal. Yeah. Look at this side. This side's a bad one. It's like a metal all rust. That's a mess. Look at those coils just eating up. she's gonna sit so unfortunately we won't have any information uh, for you about this car I don't know when uh, basically uh, they told me the other day a week just now he said maybe sooner I don't know what that means but here's what they gave me uh, $260 to diagnose it two hours uh, that should go away under warranty but I think they just you know in case it's not a warranty situation like we did something to the car who knows all right so just a little follow-up uh, they say the car's done <clears throat> here's the deal they say it's the belt I have a hard time with that and I'm gonna tell you why because we changed the belt on the trail so the one thing they did though is they cleared the codes I don't know if that affects it I ha obviously I have a lot to learn here because haven't dealt with this issue. Can-Am never gave us this issue. Our other razors never gave us this issue. But I'm seeing a lot of people talking about having this issue. 
We're gonna go get it. <clears throat> and I'll try to give you all the information I can. We're gonna go pick it up. That's what we're doing now. All right, so we're down here to pick this car up. This guy pulls in. That's a lot of, that's a lot of load, man. Look at that. Let's do this thing. Look at that, I think I see it coming. I think that's our guy. Let's grab some straps. There we are. I missed it. Did you guys miss it? I miss it. Awesome, they make him wear a helmet just to move it through the parking lot? That's cool. Look at that guy. Nice. All right, let's load this thing up again. What's that? You lined up there? It barely fits. You'll have to go over a little bit. Oh, no, 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 no. You want me to pull it on? All right. No, it's a tight fit. You got to get over quite a bit. Yeah, you got to be dead lined on when you take it up. Okay, I think I knocked the camera off. Anyway, uh, here it is. Uh, they hooked me up. Uh, I'm not gonna go into details, but they did me right on this one for sure. Um, I, and I'll look, I'm gonna be honest with you. Watch, take a look at this. But check this out. Let me show you something real quick here. Um, if you look at the belt itself, it does look like what? So you see the thread, see the thread, see the thread, see the thread, then they disappear. I don't know how we could have burned this belt up already. And the original one. Unless there's just some weirdness with these clutches when they're new. I don't know, man. Kind of weird. But look at that. All along there. So maybe, again, threads, threads, threads. You can see like an area where it looks kind of like it's burned up. So anyway, maybe uh, belt break-in is just way more critical on this machine than I'm used to. On the Can-Am, I'm gonna be honest with you. We throw them on and go. And I know people are gonna be like, oh, you gotta do the 15 minutes and the 30 minutes and the, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But let's be honest, we'll do what we're gonna do. We're not racing a race. We throw them on, we get half a season, we put another belt on. Anyway. Honestly, I'm gonna take it out and run it. It's supposed to be done. It was just a belt. I showed you that belt. So we're gonna call this video. Come back and uh, uh, we'll, you know, come back for some follow-up. Come back for some follow-up and we'll find out if that was really it or not.